Just a second. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right. So I didn't realize I was the only one on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Feel free to ask questions as we um, go ahead and move forward today and tell all your friends. So, <laughs> all right. Will do. So, so, so my name is Romel Watson. I'm the internship coordinator for the Career Center. And so this is part of the... Um, professional info session series that I put together for the month of March. So every Tuesday we'll be having these info sessions, um, same time uh, every Tuesday. And so to kick this series off, we have Graystar that's gonna be joining us today to talk a little bit about their opportunities and ways that students can get involved. And so with us, we have Christian Galvan and uh, Brittany Johnson, representatives from Graystar. And so I'm just gonna turn it over to them and have them kind of give you the scoop on everything, so. Christian and Brittany, go for it. Awesome, Ramel. Thank you so much. I appreciate the introduction. I am going to go ahead and share my screen. See if it wants to cooperate. Oops. Oops. Perfect. We can see that. You can see it. Awesome. Yep. And we'll go in presenter mode. There we go. Can you see it okay? Yes, sure can. Awesome. Perfect. Um, so we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, the first thing I want to go ahead and introduce myself. So my name is Brittany Johnson. I'm the Talent Acquisition Advisor uh, for Graystar. I support Oregon, Idaho, and Eastern Washington. Um, and then we also have Christian Galvin on the phone. Christian, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Hi, everybody. I'm Christian Galvan. Uh, I'm a Regional Property Manager for the Spokane area. Awesome. Christian, appreciate it. All right, so our goal today is to tell you a little bit about Graystar, who we are um, and how we operate. We're also gonna chat a little bit about all the cool places Graystar is operating. Um, and then as well as cover opportunities we have for students um, or students approaching graduation. So we do have internship opportunities um, across the United States as well as new grad opportunities. Um, you know, before we close out, if you have any questions, happy to answer those along the way. All right, moving on. Okay, the global leader in rental housing. So Graystar is a, a leading fully integrated real estate company offering expertise in investment management, development, and management of rental housing and properties globally. So we are a global company. We're very proud of that. We are headquartered in Charleston, South Carolina, Carolina excuse me. Um, Graystar manages and operates an estimated $220 billion worth of real estate in more than 210 markets globally. Um, this includes offices throughout North America, Europe, South America, and the Asia, Asia Pacific region. Um, we are also in Mexico as well. So that $220 billion of real estate, that number is changing every day, as Christian can attest on the phone call as well. Um, you know, there, there's times where um, we acquire companies and um, also times where we sell off a portion of our portfolio. So that number today could be 220, tomorrow it could be, um, you know, a billion dollars more. It fluctuates quite a bit. Graystar is the largest operator of apartments in the United States. So, you know, some of us on the call or some of us listening to the recording today might kind of wonder what does this global leader in rental housing mean? Um, you know, many of us have lived in apartments, whether that's student living apartments or um, multifamily regular apartments, um, affordable housing apartments. This is all within the rental housing industry. So those are all types of properties that us as Grace Jar would manage. Um, in the United States, we actually manage a little bit over 750,000 units. So that's a little over 750,000 apartments. Um, and then globally, um, we do have an investment management platform as well. Um, that investment management platform consists of about $45 billion worth of assets, um, including $21.3 billion of assets under development. So we also build properties. So like you can see this um, photo over here on the right-hand side of your screen, this is a photo of a property that we actually developed ourselves as Graystar. All right, moving on. Maybe. Come on. There we go. Okay, so here's a timeline just tells you a little bit more about Graystar. So we were founded in 1993 by Bob Faith. Um, something that I think is pretty cool is Bob is still our operating CEO. 
Uh, from 1993, he started by managing 9,000 units. Uh, we reached 50,000 units by 2002. And then from 2002 to 2008, our portfolio doubled in size. As far as units manage, managed, we were up to 100,000 managed. Um, by 2013, we doubled again and expanded our business to New Mexico and the UK. So 2013 is when we really started to see a boom in how we were growing. Um, as we continued to acquire other companies and grow, we soon expanded to China, Australia, Chile, Spain, France, and Germany. Um, along the way, Graystar earned a number of top performing awards in the multifamily and development investment industry. So one of the ways that Graystar is able to be so stable and able to grow at the rate we have is we do have three sides of our business. We manage properties. So we manage those apartments, like I had mentioned, that maybe you live, live at. Um, or we also build properties and then sell them. Um, and then we also invest in property. So sometimes we might buy a property and then manage it ourselves or um, buy it and sell it off. So three legs to the stool. Okay. Oops. All right. So this quote in the middle, um, you know, how does a company such as Graystar continue to grow? Um, by making smart business decisions and investments with a roadmap. So here, um, this quote in the middle says, culture is the number one thing we think about as a leadership team at Graystar. We try to build connections and bridges from open communication across business lines, across geographies, so that everyone really understands what it's like to be a part of the Graystar family. So I think that that's pretty cool, right? You know, even though at this point we are a global company, every region really has its own um, way of operating within Graystar's roadmap. Graystar offers us all of these tools um, and lots of opportunities to succeed. But as a region, we have an identity and we have kind of a Graystar family. Um, and Derek Ramsey, I think, kind of details that in this quote. Um, in 2020, Graystar appointed our DEI director, John Little. John Little works with a dedicated group to continue to align our company culture with our pillars and values. Our pillars and values are all of these words you see around the screen, customer satisfaction, people, integrity, operational excellence, those words kind of around this um, quote. And that is how we operate. That is our roadmap. Um, you will hear leaders at Graystar referencing these often because it's so important to us that these are integrated in the business. You know, when we think about how we operate as a team, oftentimes we'll reflect back to these words and make sure that we are operating within the Graystar roadmap. All right, moving on. Okay. So here is the, a little bit more of a breakdown of the three lines of business. So we do have the real estate operation side, which is definitely what we consider kind of the bread and butter here at Graystar. That's the largest proportion of our business. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with over 700,000 units managed globally, representing an estimated 220 billion in total managed. Um, we are also the number one manager of US rental properties. So here in the United States, we are the number one property manager, um, meaning we are the largest. So the, our closest competitor is actually less than half of our size in the United States. Um, and what that really means to you, you know, as a student, um, or what that means to somebody approaching, approaching graduation is opportunity, right? Because of our size, we do a lot of our business in-house. We have everything from legal to marketing to social media management to talent acquisition, such as myself, to HR. Um, the list goes on and on. And we do all of that in-house largely because of our size. We can afford to do that. Uh, we also have a student um, living component. So we have a little over 100,000 student properties under management as well. The second leg of our business is that development and construction piece. So we have built and constructed almost just about 40,000 units as Graystar, meaning so we have come up with the plans, bought the property, and built and developed those ourselves. Um, 21 billion globally in development underway. So you can see that variations quite a bit. Um, and that is because here in the United States, we have a lot of properties. There's a lot of properties to buy and sell. Whereas we are seeing globally, there are some markets that don't have the same rental housing structure that we have here in the US. 
So that's been a large um, area for opportunity for us here at Graystar. Our investment management side of the business um, is a very large in our European markets at almost 300 billion. And then total global markets, 114. So what that means is 114 essentially global city offices. So that's counting um, our current offices as well as our global, global portfolio. All right. Again, back to the property management side of the business. Being our largest, this is one we talk about the most. And then this is also um, a largest part of our business in your area where you currently go to school. So in our, what we consider the Inland Northwest. So we are ranked the number one manager of US rental apartments, as I said on that last slide. Um, again, you know, a little about 750 units and beds for management. Um, and what that breaks down to is actually a little bit under 3,000 apartment communities. So units mean single apartments. So out of those singles apartments, we have about 300 separate apartment communities or buildings under management. Um, this slide talks a little bit about our global markets, our presence. Um, and then we also have a picture, I'll move this guy so you can see it. We also have a picture here on the left of one of our properties. This is the Parker in Portland, Oregon. Um, at these type of properties, we do manage teams to operate um, the property from everything from our service side. So maintenance, um, to groundskeeping, keeping up the exterior of the property, all the way to the leasing, um, a leasing agent within the property. Um, worldwide, we have almost 18,000 employees. All right. So here's a map that shows a little bit more detail about where we are. Um, here are the states that we are most present in. So there's a few states that we don't have large city offices, but all of these blue states you see, these um, we would have a city regional office. Most of our regional offices are gonna be in the metropolitan areas um, of the state. So for example, in Washington, we have a regional office in Spokane. And then we also have a regional office in Seattle. In Oregon, we have a regional office in Portland. And then in Idaho, we have a regional office in Boise. So that kind of gives you an idea of your area. My goodness, I'm so sorry for the interruption. We have some construction going on outside and my dogs aren't a fan, apparently. <laughs> all right, so where was I? Talking about the states. So all of these blue states, we referenced um, Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. Um, and as I said, those metropolitan areas are going to be where the largest opportunities are for you as students. Okay, what do those opportunities look like? Um, so a quote from years past, 100% of our Gray Stars 2021 interns said that they would recommend our internship program to their peers. We are so proud of that. We send out a survey at the end of the program um, to ask our interns, you know, did you have a good experience? Did you learn a lot? And this is what we heard back. 100% of Gray Stars um, interns in 2021 said that they would recommend our internship. So why is that? Our on-site internships, um, the goal of that internship is to spend 10 weeks learning about every aspect of Graystar operations team in a firsthand experience. So you as the intern work at a property, at an apartment, and you learn a little bit about every department. So you spend time shadowing in every department, and you also have the opportunity to meet our executive level leadership on Teams calls, video calls, um, and then there's a number of check-ins with your regional property management throughout that experience, really to ensure that you understand what it's like to run and operate a multi-million dollar asset. Um, while working at Graystar Community, you meet residents, you get property tours, you learn about market share and what a market survey is, um, you help us shop competitors, gain exposure to financial management, vendor management, client relations, because a lot of these properties are owned by other clients other than ourselves. And you really discover how to uh, be a team player and also understand how the service team operates. So all of our Graystar interns have the opportunity to participate in weekly lunch and learns with our senior leadership. 
Um, in years past before COVID, we did some of this in person. That's some of those photos you'll see on the right hand, hand side of the screen. But now, you know, through COVID, we've changed. And really, that's allowed an even larger opportunity for the interns to meet on a one-on-one -on -one basis or a group basis with our executive level leadership. Um, oftentimes, we have Bob Faith, our founder, even join a few of these Teams calls and give his insight and share a little bit about how he built his business. Um, and then we also have grad positions. So what a grad position is, it's a full-time position um, for somebody who has graduated and it's Graystar's way to give back to you for investing in your education. You know, you might not have the on-site experience, um, but you have invested in your education. So we um, employ you as a full-time leasing professional. And then we plan a six month to 12 month um, onboarding plan to get you to an assistant community manager or a community manager role. So to help get you promoted within that six months to a year. Ultimately, our goal at Graystar, you know, in a perfect world, if everything went well, if you were somebody that was inter interested in the internship, you joined us for the 10 to 12 weeks this summer, um, joined our internship, you would be paid full time. Um, and you would, like I said, work full time at one property, we would help choose what property um, you're a most interested in, what property type, and then also depending on your commute, you know, we would kind of tailor that to your needs. But in a perfect world, you'd come to that internship. If you liked the internship, if you felt like Graystar was a good fit, then once you graduate, our goal would be to offer you a full-time position. Um, so it really, you know, we stay in contact as you return back to school to finish out your degree um, and make sure that you receive a full-time offer if all goes well. All right, so um, some, some testimonials from our, pro our program in the past. I'm going to go ahead and read a quote from Emma Clan. She was an intern with us in 2019. She said, my key takeaways are similar to what I presented in my capstone, learning all aspects that encompass property management, both big and small scale. This has given me a unique perspective into an industry I had absolutely no prior knowledge about. Um, and we have I've come away feeling confident in my professional and personal life. I can come up with solutions quickly, collaborate with any team, and constantly pursue new skills to help me become a well-rounded individual. I'm so glad to have partaken in an internship which encourages um, failing forward and pushes their people to work hard because they truly could care. So that was Emma's experience in our internship. Um, one of the things that I think is important about her experience is that she did not have any prior knowledge of uh, property management before she joined our internship. And I want to point that out because that is important for our students um, to hear today. You know, you don't have to know about property management. You don't have to understand property management to thrive in this industry. Um, here on the left-hand side, Heather Thorley, she is now an operations specialist with us in the Spokane region. She joined our grad program previously. She's a finance major. So she, you know, her degree goes to show that you do not have to have a specific understanding of property management in order to be successful, um, largely because in this industry, we do a little bit of everything, um, you know, keep you on your toes and you do everything from some finance budgeting to working with people to building marketing, uh, building um, out Instagram ads, having resident appreciation events. So there's really just lots of different aspects um, to our on-site position. All right, that covered the basics of what our internship and grad opportunities are. Um, Kristen, do you have anything to add before we see if we have any questions? The only thing I, I would add is, uh, yes, we do offer internship opportunities, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be, be a prior intern to join the grad program. Me, myself, I, I went to Eastern, I graduated in uh, 2018, and I came across uh, Graystar through the Career Fuse Fair that Eastern throws every every year. So, and I was not a prior uh, inter, intern for Graystar, but I did apply for the grad program, and I actually I got accepted the same year as Heather did. And like her, my path is a little, little similar where I started off as a leasing professional, worked my way up to a community manager where I was in charge of my own property. Now I'm in charge of a region. So there's great opportunity out there. Um, even if you're not an intern, you just have to stick your neck out. 
that Sorry. is that's great insight, Christian. Thank you for sharing your uh, personal story. I was hoping you would. Uh, yes, that's it's so important. Um, just as you don't need property management experience to join join the internship or um, apply to a new grad opportunity. Um, you know, you don't have to be involved in an internship to apply once you have graduated. Um, you, Graystar really invests in our people with these programs. These are programs that are meant to set you up for success as a new employee and to really learn the industry. People like Christian would be somebody that would train you and help you get acquainted to property management, acquainted to your specific property or property needs. Um, and then also build out a development plan for you so we can plan where do you want to be in six months? Where do you want to be in one year? Um, Christian grew very fast into a regional property manager, um, but that's because he had the drive, the willingness to work, and he had the interest in property management. As soon as he got started, it really got to be a great fit, um, similar to Heather's uh, story that we shared on the last slide. So, great insight, Christian. Thank you. And the only other thing too I would add is um, even if a person like even if you're interested in property management, you do apply for these uh, positions for uh, the internship or the grad program. If for some reason that doesn't work out, we do still have on-site opportunities. It doesn't mean it just because you don't make it to the grad program doesn't necessarily mean you're cut off from property management. We're always hiring throughout our properties. I have, uh, I work closely with a lot of students from Central Washington University. They did not make it through the grad program. However, I have, uh, I have a good track record of producing uh, assistant managers, community managers, even without being in the grad program. Um, as long as you're a part of the Great Star family, we will ensure and invest in you to make sure you gain what you want to gain professionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. All right, do we have any questions about the programs from anybody on the call today? Um, I had a question for Christian. So what degree did you graduate with? I graduated with a, a human resource uh, degree, human resource management with a, a minor in Spanish. Okay, thank you. Another great point, not specific to property management. <laughs> Another thing too that a little interesting thing I I did mention that I came across Graystar with uh, at the career fair that Eastern puts together. Um, another thing uh, I would not only encourage anybody who's listening to go to career fairs, but to talk to everybody just because when I went to the career fair, I wasn't looking for a property management. As I mentioned, my degree is in human resources. I just happened to come across the gray star table and there were there were one of the few people that were willing to listen to what I, all the questions I had and were intrigued so luckily it ended up working out and they're being a great fit so just keep your mind uh, uh, your mind open there's opportunities to be had as long as you have an open mind mm -hmm. yep and we will be at the next career fair so visit us there <laughs> And so for the next upcoming uh, Fuse Career Fair, that's going to be April 6th coming up. So that's usually, let me double check here, it's usually Wednesdays, April 6th. Yep, it's a Wednesday, and it's going to be from 2 to 6. Okay. And, so, and it's also free to students, so you don't need to pay anything. And um, you can register, you can pre-register if you'd like, but we are also doing registrations at the door, too, in case you decide that you want to go. You maybe didn't register, you decide you still want to go, so... That was fantastic. Is and here up on the screen is my email. It's Brittany.johnson at Graystar. So feel free to reach out if you have questions or if you have an interest in applying for the program. I think we had someone too. Does someone have a question? I heard something, but I heard a voice. No? Uh, well, I actually um, do. I was wondering if the career fair is. Oh, either one. Go ahead, Vera. Mm -hmm. Um, is the career fair in person this year? Yeah, this year it's gonna. Yeah, this year it's gonna be in person. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And it's uh, at the convention center downtown, so you can find all that stuff if you go to um, fusecareerfair.com. You'll be able to see all the all the information with that, and you can also RSVP on Handshake if you'd like to. 
So can you see me or can you hear me? We can hear you. I can hear you. But the camera is a little different, a different angle. I'm not quite sure. Or if that was intentional, I'm not sure. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. There you are. I don't know. Oh, probably got switched. Okay. So um, did it switch again? No, no, it's fine. We can see you. Okay. So um, I had a question about like actual, like more of a specific question. So when it comes to like managing property, like how do you deal? I know you guys are on like a larger scale, but how do you deal with like bad clients or like clients that don't abide by the agreements? Like they miss a payment or they damage the property. How do you deal with that? So one thing, when you say clients, do you mean um, residents that are living at the apartments? Yeah. Okay, Christian, do you wanna take that question? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so with property, uh, like uh, with property management on site, there's a lot of different ways we can deal with that. Um, but I feel like the most uh, effective way is just to be very transparent from the start. Um, so one thing is, uh, since I did start from the site level, work my way up. The one thing I always did is I like to start the uh, process from the start to finish. So I was the first point of contact when they're interested in living on site. And throughout the whole time uh, they were on site. So the main thing I did as we were uh, checking out their apartment as they were getting keys, I just made sure to emphasize like uh, the rules we have in place to, um, for the complex, such as, you know, don't, don't be punching holes through the wall, be throwing the parties, respect your neighbors. If you set the expectation from the start, that's something that um, it's been shown that they respond pretty well. And um, aspects where like, let's say someone's late on their uh, rent payment or they don't pay rent. That's another aspect where we can, um, it's more like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We contact the resident or the resident contacts us and we set up a game plan and go from there. Sometimes they need to be put on a game, uh, payment plan just because they're a little short, um, a little short one week or they're waiting on some uh, financial aid in a lot of student cases where we just know take it and go from there. But it's a case by case, depending on the property, depending on the resident, uh, depending on location, just because every property doesn't necessarily operate the same. You guys are at Eastern. So for example, uh, a property that operates, doesn't operate as normal is Eagle Point down the street from uh, from Eastern where it is a conventional property where every, anybody and everybody can live there as long as you qualify, but it's more, it's ran more like a student living because it follows the school year. Uh, so the rules are a little bit different compared to something downtown in Portland or Seattle or even Spokane. So it just depends on the community. Yeah, and one thing too, I mean, each property, um, property manager, so every community manager, regional and director also has to be aware of the specific county laws. So for example, in Portland, Oregon, there's some very specific um, eviction rules and um, so we, we every every county is actually different a little bit as well. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, great question. So I'll add one more thing too, just for those who are in the room and just for the sake of the recording. So um, I'm, you know, again, as for me being the internship coordinator, I can help you coordinate the internships as well. So once you get to the point where you decide that Graystar is who you want to work with, again, um, who would they contact if they were ever interested in, in the internship or hiring opportunities? Would that, would that be you, Christian, if they were at all interested in moving forward? They reach out to you or would it be someone else? Uh, they can talk to me. Um, it's usually it's going to be a mixture between me and Brittany. Okay. But usually for the a main point of contact to initiate everything, you just you can just reach out to me. Okay, sounds great. So another one, and then Ramel as well. If you have a one on one conversations, or if anybody does reach out and want to connect, feel free um, to let Christian or myself know. I'm happy to jump on a phone call anytime. Absolutely. Perfect. So that's good to know because for, for the, in, the the way we structure internships here on our campus, there has to be a site supervisor on staff on the on the professional side that will be in charge of the intern once they're there. So again, for those who are interested in doing an internship, just know that you'll have a faculty internship advisor within your department whose job it is to authorize the internship. 
and also to go over any learning expectations they want you to have, but then also on the professional side, there needs to be a, a site supervisor that's on that's with that company whose job it is to discuss projects and tasks and assignments and have it sort of laid out for you. You'll want to make a you'll want to kind of write all that stuff down. That way, when you talk with the faculty person, um, you'll be able to relate that back to them and then just make sure you, you'll have enough information at that point to handle the online paperwork that we that we mm -hmm. house on Handshake. So I don't want to bore you with all the all those all those parts but just just know that that's there, there is paperwork involved and there and you'll have to sort of work with the gatekeepers on both sides of the internship in order to make it work so yeah we'll talk more about that at another time awesome well thank you appreciate it thank you so much well, I think that's a, that's everything. So if you don't have any questions, I want to thank you all for dedicating your time for the workshop. And um, again, if you have questions, you can call Christian or Brittany directly. Um, is there a, a you had the share, you had that share page that had your information on it, correct? Yes. Did you want to yeah, share that one last direct. time? Um, you know, yeah. I closed out of it. Can I, oh, put, that's okay. can I put my info in the chat? You sure can. Well, okay. they can always go back because it was, we had it on the um, pages earlier. So for those, for the recording, you can go back and I'll make sure that I email the folks that are here. Oh, there you go. And it's in the chat space there too. So for those who, Perfect. there you go, <laughs> there you go. And so there you have it. So thank, other than that, thank you all. And I appreciate you. And so for next Tuesday, we will be having another info session and um, I can't quite remember who it is, but you know, if you tune in to a uh, handshake, you'll be able to see who's next in the lineup and thank you for your time. Take care. Awesome. Thank you everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.